Great, so first of all, thank you all for having me. I'm gonna be sharing with you a little bit about myself, but more importantly, I'm gonna be telling you about a show on YouTube that I have and produce. But I hope you guys can take something away from my story and I appreciate you all being here. I'm gonna give you guys three questions that I always ask everyone I interview. The first question is, what is your wildest ambition? What is your biggest dream? Second question, I want you to write your definition of success. Third question, who are you? So um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how the show started. I'm from Kuwait. I originally moved here to pursue a higher education. I went to Pepperdine Business School. I graduated. Along the time of my graduation, I was very confused what I'm going to do with my life. I was questioning my, my life's path, right? Am I going to get a job back home? Am I going to be happy doing that job back home? Until I met a certain individual. And I remember that professor got to me and I said, my name is Saad. I'm from Kuwait and I want to start an automotive company after I'm done with school. And he pauses, looks at me and goes, is your last name Ferrari or something? And the whole class starts laughing. And that's when I realized a very important lesson that I learned is number one, you do not need permission to dream big. A lot of us are very scared to vocalize what we want to do with our lives because we're worried about what others are going to think or how hard it's going to be or how we're going to be looked at or what if we fail. So the first lesson I learned from that incident was you do not need permission to dream big. And the more you vocalize your dream, the more your body and your mind start working towards that goal. The second lesson I learned from interviewing these individuals is success is relative. We all have different definitions of success, which means we should never compare our journeys to others. That's very important. So the third lesson I learned from these interviews is if you don't know who you are, you're not gonna know what you want. It's very important to know who you are in this world to figure out what you want. My mentor always tells me, clarity with your intention will determine your direction. And I never understood that until I interviewed these seven individuals. And that was our first season. Now there's a reason why I put the wildest ambition first. The second question is your definition of success. And the third question is who are you? The more we ask why on the first question, the more clear our definition of success is, the more guidance we have to figure out who we are as individuals. And now I want to tell you a little bit about how this interview process began. One day we got invited to Pagani's Villa in Carmel during Car Week in Monterey. And that was my first experience sitting with someone who was so great and successful while being passionate about cars. And I got to sit with the most, the guru of automotive making. And we sat down next to the fire and he doesn't speak English just uh, Spanish and Italian, and his right-hand guy was sitting there translating everything. And I remember at that time, I was so confused, no idea that I was gonna start designing a vehicle of my own. And we sit down and I ask him like, what is, like, what are you trying to do with your life? Like, you've already, you're already at the top of your domain, what else can you do? And he answered by saying, you know, when I started doing this, I started because it was a passion. Now that I see that my cars are really impacting people and people are attracted to the cars, I feel like I need to look for something greater and keep pushing my limits. So you might see me as successful. I see myself at the very beginning. It's all about how I'm gonna keep that business going. How am I gonna keep creating cars that are gonna inspire others to wanna own these cars? Because to him, he still didn't see that he was on top of the game. And I remember telling my friend like, I really love what he's doing, this is crazy. Like, I don't wanna go back home. I don't wanna get a corporate job. I wanna do something that great. I just didn't know what I wanted to do. And I've always envied anyone that was so good at one thing for some reason. At the age of 24, I went back home. I told my family that I'm not going to do a corporate job. I'm not going into the you know, regular business world. And I started putting together the plan of starting a, an automotive company. I found a lot of setbacks and a lot of people that told me, you're crazy, you're never going to get funding, and you shouldn't be saying that out loud because if you fail, people are going to say he failed. And you should get a job, you should get financially secure, you should pursue something that's going to get you stable, pay your rent, and be able to give you the life you want and, and be able to, you know, to just be part of community and society. And where I come from, I don't know if you know much about the Middle Eastern culture, it's kind of taboo to go against the grain. So if you're not gonna go into business, if you're not a doctor, if you're not an engineer, if you're not you know, pursuing a higher education all the time, you're kind of wasting your life. 
And I decided to move back to California because that's where I found myself and that's where I was exposed to my passions. And so I started reading a lot of different self-help books. I got really fascinated about like the, the topic of greatness and success. And then there was one incident. I went to a Thanksgiving dinner with my mentor and that's when he told me his life story for the first time, unfiltered, everything he went through from the age of 17 to, to the age he is today. And I remember that if I did record that conversation and put it up on YouTube or anywhere, would have anyone else felt inspired and encouraged to go and pursue their wildest dreams, to stop what they're doing, to stop worrying about what others think. And that's when the idea of Legendary came to mind. And so I contacted my friend, Ivo Spirov, who was the, the talent for the first episode, who was an artist from Bulgaria. He went through the hardest time. I'll let you guys watch the episode at your own convenience. But one thing that attracted me to him was his positive mindset. No matter what he was in, a financial crisis, losing custody of his son, a divorce, he was always happy and positive. And so we filmed the first episode with Ben. Anyone here a martial arts fan, jiu-jitsu? Awesome. Cobrinha, familiar? Cobrinha? Awesome, he's my professor. And we filmed the second episode with him. And that year, he won the Super Grand Slam. He was the first black belt in history to win all four major titles in the same year. So that video got almost 70,000 views. So the snowball started. And then I contacted Alejandro, who was a good friend of mine that I met at Carmel at the Pagani Villa event that night. And all we did was talk about cars, exchange social media information. So I called him, I'm like, Alejandro, do you think I can film the third episode with you? He's like, I'd love to, I love what you're doing, let's go ahead and do it. And that was the start of the traffic that my channel got. Basically, these are the three lessons I learned from these interviews. And I was hoping today that by sharing my story with you guys, you could take something away from it. And I'm hoping you guys have more questions because I love to answer questions. And most importantly, the reason I'm here today is because when I was in that same chair that you're in, close to graduation, I was very confused, very scared. I still don't know what I'm trying to do with my life. I still don't know if Legendary is going to become something that I imagine it to become. I still don't know if I'm ever going to start and finish the car company. But one thing is for sure, I'm going to continue going on my own path and continue trying my best to live the life I expect of myself and not what others expect of me. And again, clarity with your intention will determine your direction, but without action, intention is nothing. So that's why our motto at Legendary is legends do, because what's common between all the people I've interviewed is they just did what they wanted to do. And that's what made them great. So thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. I'm hoping there's questions. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. I think we'll have a lot of questions. Yeah, Mike. Please. How long have you been doing it? The show? Legendary. May 3rd, 2017. That's when we launched the first episode. And you're a season in, you said? You're, we're almost, we're going to release the last two episodes this month. Web, webisodes, right? Like yeah, 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 on YouTube. Content. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and thank what, you. What, what, it's just about focusing on people who have done things. So basically, um, we interview different successful uh, individuals across various domains, whatever the domain. It could be, you know, business, automotive. yeah, automotive, whatever. And one thing that's really cool is I was watching a lot of different TED Talks, and then this TED Talk, it was called Follow Your Gut. I hope I didn't butcher the title. Uh, it was by Magnus Walker, where he moved from England to California, moved to Venice, started selling denim on the boardwalk, one thing led to another. He owned serious clothing. Rockstar started wearing the clothing line. He then bought a loft in downtown. That was like, I think in the late 70s or early 80s. And production companies started renting, renting out uh, these lofts for like music videos, like Jay-Z, all of these guys. And so basically, after watching that TED talk, I booked my one-way ticket back to California on a tourist visa. And I ended up having to interview him on episode six. So that was a very like, sentimental moment for me because it was that that TED talk that made me decide to like move back to California. For like your first episodes or like your early episodes, like how do you get the famous people to like answer your email or like how do you contact I love that question. So does anyone here think the hardest part is getting the interviewees? I'm just curious. You think so? You think you think so? Awesome. I'm gonna answer that question but I'm gonna tell you what the hardest part is. The hardest part is to find a team that believes in your vision and works willingly and from the heart towards your vision as well and believes in you and gets to give 100% into the project. Because that is the most important factor to building any company, any movement, whether it's entertainment, clothing, whether you wanna be a racer, your coach, your mechanics, these guys are as important as the guy behind the wheel. Whether you wanna have a football team, the board of directors are as important as the team that's playing on the field. 
So um, that was, I just wanted to clarify that. That's the most important thing. Like the people dictate the culture of the company. To answer your question, I had a lot of rejections, but I think consistency is key if you're like consistent. So when I started, I met Gary Vee after the first or second episode. And I went up to him to, in LA and I said, Gary, like, how do I get people? I asked him the same question, like you on my show. And he goes, just ask them. So I look at him like, okay, can you be on my show? And he goes, ah, uh, here, uh, get the contact of Tyler, blah, 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 you know? And we were in contact. It never happened yet, but we're close. And one thing is gonna lead to another. So I think it's consistency and not being afraid of, of you know, re being rejected. And just like always try to find something relatable between you and them. So like with Alejandro, like I have a friendship with him, a relationship with him. So it was easier for me to get into him. But with Tara Mackey, one of my friends, my dear friends, his mother had cancer. He told me about the book. So I went up to an event where she was doing a book signing. I said, my friend told me that your book helped his mother through cancer. And this is a very important thing to me. And I would love to have you on my show. And in your book, it says, never take no for an answer. So I'm not leaving until you say yes. She looked at me and she said, I'd love to. It took months to make it happen, but that was that. Another story is James Franco. Saw him at dinner, went up to him. Hey man, would love to have you on my show. He looked at me and was like, cool. And that was it. So. Um, it didn't happen, it's fine. The agent said he's not available, but doesn't mean I won't try again, you know? So it's really about, and some of them happen on Instagram too, man, like in the DM and, man, I'm, I'm serious, I'm serious. You think I'm kidding. The season two is all about DMs. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? And is this your only, like you don't have to answer this, but is this your I only can source of income or? I, it's not even a source of income yet. Actually, it's a source of outcome. I'm spending, <laughs> I'm spending more money than I'm making right now. Honestly, no. I just spent that year focusing on making money and then I used that money to build what I believe in now. So source of income, I do stuff on the side, website development, stuff like that. But yeah, it, there's a lot of uncertainty. And that's why I think like by doing, you become friends with failure. You become fr comfortable with uncertainty. You just got to do more, you know, and, and really just you learn everything through doing. That's a very, very, I feel like it's a deeper question. Give me a second. So you, the question is broken down into two parts, right? One, how do you be more available around people who you want to network with? Was that the f beginning of the question? And then second, how do you actually connect with them? Yeah. The first question is you got to put yourself out there. The answer to the first question, first part of the question. For example, when I met Tara Mackey, she was at a, does anyone know Fresh, the cosmetic store? Fresh, awesome. I've never, I didn't even know about the store till I, till I found out she was gonna be there. So it was a line full of women, ready to get facials and book signings, and she was just standing there. And the line was so long that it took me 40 minutes to just take like three steps in because everyone kept talking to her. So I decided to get a facial because the facial seat was right next to Tara Mackey. So while I was having a facial, she looks at me and she goes, ha ha, this is funny. I'm like, actually, the only reason I'm doing this is to talk to you. So I got up with the mask on my face and that's how I did my pitch. So I hope this answers the first part of your question. The second part of your question, one thing I've found is if you want to connect with others, you got to know yourself. Because once you know yourself, your authentic voice comes out. And when people feel that there's authenticity in what you're saying, they connect with you naturally. A lot of times, the only reason we don't connect with others is because we're trying so hard to have them like us or impress them. But when you know who you are and you come and present who you are, you're either going to connect or not. And there's so much you can control, you know? So some of the people I've interviewed, I've become friends with, and some we've just become acquaintances. And that's just how it is. Certain people click, certain people don't. You don't want to force it, but you want to be yourself 100%. And what do your parents think of what you're doing now? I love that question. Um, I actually got a call from my dad yesterday. And he goes, I met this uh, lady at this mall, and she said she's so proud of your show. Like, I just saw this stuff on Instagram. I'm like, no, there's actually a show on YouTube. You should watch it. I've been sending you links, but whatever. <laughs> but um, initially, when I decided to leave Kuwait, he was very reluctant to what I was trying to do. But now that he starts seeing other people tell him, hey, like, we really love what your son's doing out there, there's like a sense of like gratitude and like joy. Like, okay, he's cutting his own path. Like, I like that, you know? Especially that where we come from, it's a culture of like hand downs. Like your family has a business, you carry on and then your son carries on and one of the brother, brothers can be a doctor, the other one has to keep carrying on the business. So yeah, and then my mom has always been supportive of everything. Yeah, she just worries too much, yeah. Did you ever struggle between like doing the less risky thing and being corporate or did you always know that like 
you wanted to go against the grain and like do something creative or end up in entertainment? Ever since I was little, I was always against the grain. I failed chemistry because I was trying to make rap beats in my laundry room. Like, I'm serious. Like, I, I would go up to the teacher at 10th grade and look at him like, He's like, you're failing, you're not gonna go to 11th grade. I'm like, I wanna be a rapper, so I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> and, and in Kuwait, it's really weird. Like, who wants to be a rapper from Kuwait? Like, it took us a long time to accept French rappers, and now, like, there's a Middle Eastern trying to rap in English. I had the worst accent at the time. <laughs> and, like, I really believed in it. So I was always that kid that my mom was like, what is going on in his head, you know? When I played soccer, I'm like, I'm gonna do it professionally. I was, like, always all in. So I guess I always tried to do something um, against the grade, but I did, it really hit home when I moved back to Kuwait, and I got my corporate job. And I was starting a superfood cafe, and I started feeling that there's money coming in, there's a lot of security, and it was really hard for me to say, I'm leaving. That was the hardest part. I was like, maybe this is good. Maybe I should give it 10 years, make money, and then pursue. But then I was like, no, I'm wasting time. I need to learn. And that's what I, I really want you guys to take away from today. It's like, just sit down with yourselves, spend an hour a week, really, you'll be surprised, like one hour a week with yourselves, your favorite books, a couple of TED Talks, and ask yourselves these questions. What am I trying to do with my life? Why am I scared to ask that person for that job? Why am I scared to, you know, perform? Why am I not doing what I want to do? Why am I not investing in that relationship if I care about it so much? And I just feel like if you invest time and energy into understanding who you are, everything around you just becomes so much better because you'll feel so much more comfortable being yourself.